Good morning everyone. This is my new lecture. It's an important topic in gynecology, which is abnormal bleeding from genital tract. I am Dr. Ala Musbah, professor of obstetric gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. This is my email and my blog spot, dralabmusbah.blogspot.com, which contain many articles in OB guide and pictures for operation. Belong to me. Let us start our journey. The content of this lecture include menstrual cycle, classification of abnormal bleeding, diagnosis, Dysfunctional implant We will cover all these four in this lecture today. Okay, we wanted to know the definition of normal menstrual cycle and the abnormal one. We wanted to know also the causes of abnormal bleeding. We wanted to diagnose a case with abnormal bleeding via history, examination, investigations. And how can we treat such cases? Lastly, we want to know about dysfunctional uterine bleeding. As regards FIGO 2011, the normal menstrual cycle has a frequency of 24 to 38 days and the last 4 to 8 days with 5 to 80 millimeter milliliter of blood loss and variation of menstrual cycle length measured over 12 months less than 20 days. This is a new definition for the normal menstrual cycle. Again, has a frequency of 24 to 38 days and the last, the duration of the menstrual flow from 4 to 8 days. And the amount of blood is from 5 to 80 milliliters. And variation of the menstrual cycle lens measured over 12 months, less than 20 days. This is the normal. Okay. So, as you see in this picture, this is the menstrual period, then the proliferative phase then the secretory phase, then again the menstrual period. We calculate the length of the cycle from the first day of the menstruation to the first day of the next menstruation. Okay, what about the old definition? They describe the menstrual cycle as 28 days plus or minus 7 days. So range between 21 to 35. This is different from the new one. Okay, and you could consider it abnormal at below 21 or 35. Considered abnormal. The duration of the flow from 2 to 7 in the old definition for the menstrual cycle and and the average five days. If less than two, it is abnormal. If more than seven, it is abnormal. Okay, again to figure 2011. Abnormally dry bleeding is a broad term that describes irregularities in the menstrual cycle involving frequency, regularity, duration, the volume flow, and we noticed these changes in the new definition. Enter menstrual bleeding means is the bleeding that occurs between otherwise normal menstrual period. Normal menstrual period. So bleeding that occurs between the menstrual period is called enter menstrual bleeding. Okay. 
also abnormal breathing is considered chronic when it has occurred for most of the previous six months or acute when episode of heavy bleeding warrants immediate intervention so i have new expression in gynecology as regard the chronic acute and abnormal plant bleeding and terminal bleeding bleeding in between the cycles abnormally trying bleeding how can be defined in new definition as regards to the precise level abnormally trying bleeding is a common symptom in women with a prevalence of 10 to 30 percent among women of reproductive age with higher incidence occurring around menarche and perimenopause. So the incidence increase if we are around the age of menarche or perimenopause. There is certain item described in the past and the expression used in the past like menorrhagia for excessive and or prolonged administration, metrorrhagia for irregular bleeding, menometrorrhagia if, if both of them present in the same case, menostaxis, regular periods but prolonged duration, Bulimenorrhea, too frequent menstruation. Bulimenorrhagia, heavy menstruation, and too frequent also at the same moment. Intermenstrual bleeding, bleeding that occurred in between the cycle. Breaks through bleeding, spotting that occurred in the intermenstrual period due to hormonal therapy like patient taking oral pills. Hypomenorrhea, scanty menstruation, oligomenorrhea, infrequent menstruation. Okay, what about the causes of abnormal bleeding? We have general causes, local causes, and dysfunction. Dysfunctional, diagnosed only after exclusion of local and general causes. Okay. An example for local causes is this fibroid, this subnucleus fibroid. This patient has subnucleus fibroid, intramural fibroid, and broad ligament fibroid. This intracavitary lesion causes bleeding, and the bleeding with fibroid commonly heavy menstrual bleeding. So, they're during the menstruation. General causes may be psychological, blood diseases, anemia, hypertension, congestive heart failure, hypothyroidism, liver disease. And there is another classification to causes according to the age. And really, it is something important. Because what is common in certain age is not common in another age group. Let us see. We can divide it into premenarchal, adolescent, or teenager, adult between 20 to 39, premenopause, perimenopause, postmenopause. For example, premenarchal girl, children, the trauma or sexual abuse or foreign body is commoner lesion. An adolescent girl, the dysfunctional bleeding is common and during the age of 20 to 39 this is the age of pregnancy and the complication of pregnancies okay. also PCOS persistent ovarian syndrome for premenopausal still the complication of pregnancy also, dysfunctional dry bleeding is common in such age. IUD user. Perimenopause, also dilatory dysfunction, functional dry bleeding. 
my pride is governor in this age also. Endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial cancer is important. Post menopause, endometrial carcinoma is important. Atrophic endometritis and vaginitis, endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial polyp, and hormonal replacements. Right? Okay, causes according to FIGO. 2011, this is the newest one. The divided according to what is called Balm Koi. Balm Koi. Balm P A L M. P for polyp, A for adenomyosis, L for leomyoma, M for malignancy and hyperplasia. And this organic lesion. And on the other side, we have coin, mainly non organic lesion or function, like coin C O E I N, C for coagulopathy, O for ovulatory dysfunction, E for endometrial causes, I for iatrogenic, N not yet classified. This is the new classification which defined the causes. We choose the most common causes and the most important causes for abnormally prime bleeding and they defined it in this classification. This is the classification of palm coin and as we said this is organic as regard in palm. This is functional mainly or non structural etiology like coagulopathy, ovulatory dysfunction, endometrial, iatrogenic, not classified. This is for coin. Okay, again with FIGO 2011, they have a, a new classification. Uh, for leomyoma. We consider seven types of leomyoma according to, to the presence of the leomyoma in the cavity, in the muscle wall, on the surface of the uterus. So, grade zero, L zero, L for leomyoma as we said before in bulb coin classification. Then, zero, the fibroid completely inside the uterine cavity and has a pedicle. One, the fibroid completely inside the uterine cavity but with no pedicle, attaching only to the endometrium. Two, the fibroid is intramural and bulging to the uterine cavity. Three, the fibroid or leomyoma is completely intramural, just touching the endometrial plate, not bulging. Four, complete intramural leomyoma, not touching the endometrium. Five, the leomyoma intramural was slightly bulging outside the surface of the uterus. Six, intramural, but the main part is outside the uterus or outside the surface of the uterus. So you can consider it also subserous. Seven, the leomyoma outside the wall of the uterus and the connected to the wall of the uterus by pedicle. So when I say L0, L1, L2, L3, you understand me now where is the leomyoma as regard from the uterine cavity from the wall of the uterus or surface of the uterus. How to diagnose 
abnormally tribe bleeding. We depend on history, examination, and investigation. What about history? I wanted to ask about the age of the patient. We know that some, some bleeding is due to certain causes at certain age group. And it is commoner in such age group. Others in other age group. So age is important. Complain of the patient and we will do analysis for the bleeding. What it is, what it is. What is the precipitating factors? Nistral pattern is important. Gravidity and parity. Sexual activity. History of trauma. Infection. Systemic disease. Medications. And any documented investigation with the patient will ask all about this. Any similar condition before is important also. And as you see, this picture, this is a case with her, a case with the patient from Leno, facial hair, mustache, and blood glucose also in diabetic patient, labor for many complications. Examination. We'll do general examination. Searching for hirsutism, enlarged thyroid, hypomotic patches, galactorrhea, acne, and so on. Abdominal, for detecting any abdominal mass, healthy abdominal swelling, organomegaly, liver, or spleen. Pelvic examination for diagnosing infection, any lesion, polyps. Fibroid, laceration. So it is very important. This picture, this is a uterus. I cut it longitudinally to show the, the uterine cavity for case of endometrial hyperplasia and adenomyosis in the wall here. Okay. This is lady as a goiter. Thyroid which can be detected during general examination. Okay, let's go to the investigations. Lab investigation like CBC, pregnancy test, of course, serum pregnancy test, TSH, prolactin, serum progesterone, day 21, dehydroendosterone sulfate, Total testosterone and the free testosterone will measure the, the liver function test and fasting insulin and the coagulation profile. TVS to detect any mass in the uterus or ovaries, any pelvic mass. Also, it is important to measure the endometrial sickness, especially in postmenopausal lady. And we have a cutoff of 5 millimeter. Below that, the possibility of malignancy is very low. MRI may be needed in some cases, but it is expensive and we need expertise. And we can ask for MRI if we cannot reach the diagnosis by TBS and the abdominal ultrasound. Other investigation, like endometrial biopsy. Yes, a stress grief, fab smear for cervical lesion. Treatment. What is the treatment of case with abnormally trying bleeding? Depend on the cause. The treatment will depend on the cause. For example, fibroid, I can do my myectomy, I can do hysterectomy, I can do hormonal treatment using GnRH agonist and so on. For example, adenomyosis, I can do hysterectomy, I can give medical treatment like uh, gestogen or progestin, GnRH agonist. For endometrial polyp, I can do polypectomy, myostroscopy or carotage.
for endometrial carcinoma, laparotomy, and, and total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral salvage hysterectomy, pelvic lymphadenectomy, post-operative radiation, and so on. This picture of multiple ground prior total hysterectomy was done for this case. Okay, let us go to our last objective, dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Definition of dysfunctional uterine bleeding, it is abnormal uterine bleeding in absence of organic cause, as we said from the start. The incidence, 60% of abnormal uterine bleeding, so it's going to be a large number of cases. Most of the cases are anovulatory, 90%. Ovulatory only in 10%. We can have an example for endocrine abnormality and endometrium, insufficient follicle, an anovulatory one, or persistent follicle, not ruptured, or no ovulation. So, here inadequate proliferative or atrophic endometrium, but here with persistent follicle. Resistant production of estrogen, unopposed estrogen, leads to proliferation and hyperplasia. A while in the ovulatory, for endocrine abnormality, it may be short proliferative phase or long proliferative phase or insufficient corpus luteum or resistant corpus luteum with each exchanges on the Diagnosis, of course, needs history, taking, examination, investigation, and we mentioned it before. So, what is the treatment? Actually, it is individualized survey. So, it depends according to the case, according to age. Parity, wish of pregnancy, severity of hemorrhage, and, endo and the endometrial pathology. Okay, we have medical non hormonal treatment and the medical hormonal treatment and surgical treatment. Medical non hormonal treatment like iron therapy, correction. Anemia, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, anti fibrinolytic drugs, isamcelate, epsilon, amino carboid acid, diazmine. This is the first option, especially in patients desiring future child bleeding. What about the medical hormonal treatment? The medical hormonal treatment may be an oral or injection or intrauterine contraceptive releasing hormone like me. So, I have a variety of hormonal treatment. It can be given cyclic or continuous combined hormone, estrogen, progesterone, or progestin only, GnRH agonist, and levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system. Surgical therapy of dysfunctional uterine bleeding. If medical therapy fails, we give a chance for three to six months. Then we decide is this patient responded to treatment or not. So what we can do? We can do simple operation like dilatation and decuretation, endometrial curvitation. We can do hysteroscopic endometrial ablation using electrocautery, cryoablation, laser, thermoablation. And this is considered an alternative to structure. The third choice may be structure. As in this, page, this picture, this case, total 
hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo operation. This is post loops, and this is the ovaries, and this is the posterior wall of the uterus, and this is the ovarian ligament. Okay, hysterectomy, is it has an advantage? Yeah, complete cure for the patient. Avoid medical treatment anymore. Remove any mass pathology. And actually it is important because sometimes you didn't find the cause of the bleeding. And, and if you did another option or another line of treatment and the patient still bleeder, there may be a missed pathology. So for hysterectomy, one of the advantage, remove any mass pathology and also give public view. Okay, so in conclusion, we have different types of definitions. We have an old one and the recent one, and we should know both, especially FIGO 2011. We have a journey through the causes of normal uterine bleeding, how to diagnose via history, examination, investigations, and how to treat such cases. And lastly, we discussed the dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Thank you, Professor Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University, and this is the blogspot belong to me, draalamusbah.blogspot.com. I hope I will see you soon in another lecture. Thank you.